Every now and then, you come across a story that makes you think, wow, it just stops you in your tracks and makes you think about everything you know and how you just have to throw it all away and start again. Oh, when I started narrating, I wanted to get back to the tradition of the early Twilight Zone episodes, you know, those stories that made you think about life and everything you knew and just reevaluate everything because of something that you just couldn't comprehend. And I think you're going to understand what I mean after listening to tonight's story. So, my dear friends, I ask just one thing of you. Sit back and relax with your favourite drink, because it's time to listen. I didn't mean for it to happen. God, I hate those words. They are meaningless. No sane person means to destroy what cannot be replaced or restored. But still, it happens. Because people can be idiots. We didn't have a perfect world. Bad things happened. People were sometimes miserable. But we could live, even thrive in that world. Now. Now I am the one saying, oh, I didn't mean for it to happen. She's curled up on her side. I should find something to replace the bandages with. Hers have become crusted with fluids I can't name. Beneath that filthy strip of cloth are infected, bleeding holes. There should be blue eyes watching the world with curiosity. She shouldn't be curled up on the floor. She should be standing at one of the windows. He should be at another. Small glances between them. Gentle smiles. Reassurance that so long as they are two, they are fine. But now it is just she alone. And I. And we are not fine. I slide down the wall. A nail catches and tears at my shirt and skin. It hurts but I can't say a damn thing. At least I'm not blind and bereft. No, I am just a murderer. I should find a new bandage. Although why, I'm not sure. We won't live through the night unless there's a miracle. I should stop being a coward and slit her throat. A quick, merciful death rather than rotting eyes killing her with sepsis. But I can't. I've loved her from the first moment I saw her. How could I not? She had this smile, this laugh. It was wonder and sunlight mixed together. It always made you feel alive when it was for you. Mostly, it was for him. There was a bond between them. You could see it. Feel it. She would always smile, and he would stand taller. He would be out of sight, and she would suddenly seek. Always they touch one another, fingers entwined as they walked. A caress as they passed one another. His arm snaking about her waist and pulling her to him for a moment, to whisper in her ear and make her blush. Ah, <sighs> To watch that secret smile. The soft lips parting, eyes half closing. All that was over now. Her arms were hugged tight to her as she tried not to cry aloud. She knew she was alone. I was there, but I was not who she wanted. I was her monster, even if she didn't know it. I didn't mean for it to happen. Didn't I promise I would never hurt Jill on purpose? No. I only wanted him dead. Two years later. Footsteps! I lifted my head from my work. How many? Two. Man and child. Child is injured. I rose and moved to one of the slots in the outer wall. Yep, a man, tired looking, backpack, 
supporting a young boy. The boy was pale and stumbling, his arm bound tight against him. Infected or just accident? I'll check on him. Hide. Could be bait. You never said the reanimants could plan before. They can't, but men can. Breeding age female, food and medicine are worth too much these days. Hide. I added a bit too much fear, I think, to the last. But Jill went into the escape tunnel and locked the door. Not for the first time, nor would it be the last. I was thankful for the trickery of two fallout shelters, one concealed behind the other. The boy had broken his forearm, I found out. Didn't take too long after all. The man was surprised at my appearance. I made some vague assurance I lived in a nearby town and was hiking. I splinted the boy's arm and chided him to stay out of trees. It was almost sunset before I made it back to my hideout. Jill, it's me. Give me a few minutes to clean myself up and get rid of the clothing. Boy will be fine, as long as he stays out of the trees. That's good to hear. Her voice was softly muffled, but calm. Then again, she hadn't had one of her fits in nearly a year now. Matt, what day is it? I paused. I had to think about it. Uh, I think I lost track somewhere. But I think it's March. Gonna try and make a small garden again this year. Fewer rabbits and deer now. Can they reanimate? No. Only meat eaters and omnivores seem to be affected. Makes me think it was something to do with infected prions. I heard once someone thought it was a mutated form of Creutzfeldt Jakob disease, or maybe rabies. I think it's more parasitic in nature, forcing the host form to seek out fresh victims to infect. Wanted predators, not prey for that. Suddenly, I was glad I'd done as much study as I could before our retreat to the safety of this place. Open the door, please. Sorry, I'm going to stink for a bit, but better safe than sorry. Never knew how the first infections happened. Eau de Lisol was not the most pleasant of colognes, but at least it would fade, and I brought nothing inside to risk Jill's fragile health. <sighs> Coward, I called myself again. I had condemned her to torture, and now to a frailty that frustrated her. I could have ended it all for her, walked away, but I had loved Jill for so very long. One day, she would come to love me in return. She just needed to adjust to so many things. Blind, widowed, the world she had grown up in forever gone. Gone, because if it wasn't, she would be taken from me. If it's warm tomorrow, can we go out? Not a good idea. Give it a few days to make sure the man and boy really were just traveling through. So, um, soup? Soup or soup for dinner? I miss pizza. So do I, Jill. I wish I could find some logical reason for us to have one. But explaining how I happened to find a pizza place open and serving still... <laughs> I could look up recipes, maybe. Had to be something out there about making cheese. Okay, explain where I found a cow and how I intended to keep it alive. Oh. Only telling her I had gardens hidden about explained the few vegetables we had. At least, for now. If she ever learned the truth, she would hate me. I couldn't have that. So, I would forget pizza, beer... And pecan pies. Took over a week before he decided it was safe for us. Rather, for me to go out. Not long, he warned me. Not long enough by my choice. I'd spent a year thinking of it. Mad and I had nothing left to give this world. I could feel the shells becoming bare. A garden? Where would seeds come from? How would we hide it if we could barely hide ourselves? 
settlement. Brood mare for me. Although I knew the fever had done too much damage to my body to carry a child easily, if at all. And slavery for him. He wasn't a fighter. He tried to sound intelligent, but I'd seen a researcher before the disaster. I knew he was just spouting off things he'd heard and memorized. How long could we hide in the ground like moles? Sunlight warmed my face, and I looked toward it. I had to be the brave one. He wasn't. He knew what the chances were. He knew the odds. This was not murder. This was freedom for both of us. Close your eyes a moment and listen to the stream. Hear the stream? I placed a hand on his shoulder. There, hear that bird with a long trill. That is a skylark. I took the gun from my pocket. No hesitation, I lifted and aimed where I knew his head should be. The sound was louder than I expected. No cry. Good. I didn't want to miss and wound him, but had to destroy the head so he wouldn't become a reanimate. A breath, and I smiled. Time to rejoin my husband at long last, lifting the gun to rest its muzzle beneath my throat. One shot straight up was all it would take. So, from here we have two endings. Which one do you prefer? Damn it. He sputtered coffee all over his tablet and grabbed at a cloth to wipe it off only to knock the plate onto the floor and set the dogs to barking. His son came racing in, banging his cast against the doorframe. Dad? Oh, just careless, buddy. Give me some paper towels, will you? Grabbing his laptop and opening it. Local news. No mistake. It was the man they'd met in the woods. He felt a chill run down his spine. Had they gotten too close to the man's lair? What would have happened if they'd stumbled onto it? He closed the lid, taking the towels from his son, and hugged him for a moment, smiling at the half-protests. Go get ready for school. Opening the laptop again, Mad Clemming, 57-year-old unemployed man, had dug out two chambers in the National Forest. More shocking, the woman whose body had been found. Gillian Summers was supposedly dead for over two years after the lab she and her husband had worked in had exploded. Only now, they suspected that what had been ruled an accident wasn't. Mad Clemming had worked as a janitor for the company, and seemingly had held the blinded Mrs. Summers captive ever since. Poor woman. What sort of hell had she endured? Somehow, though, she had found a handgun and almost killed the man. Instead, she'd knocked him out before committing suicide. He looked at the picture of the bandage-wrapped head and shook his own. Poor woman. If things had been different, maybe they could have found her. Or he and his son would be two more bodies out in the forest. Cadaver dogs were searching the area because several hikers had gone missing over the past two years. If there was a god in heaven, he hoped the devil had a special room waiting for that man. She woke to the light and to birdsong, frowning as she realized she was in the lab. <laughs> she could see. Had it been a nightmare? Just a dream. She had fallen asleep. Yes, that had to be the answer. She heard the door open and turn quickly in alarm. Only, oh, sweet merciful one, she ran to her husband's arms and snuggled close. Hey, if that's the greeting I get for bringing coffee, gonna start bringing smaller cups, so I have to go get more. He smelled wonderful. <laughs> well, okay, he smelled of the coffee splashed all over the floor. Oh, let me grab some towels. 
She was scooped up into strong arms. Oh, let the janitor clean it up. We have to do something for the pay. You and I have a date. We do? She buried her face against the crook of his neck and sighed, content to let him take her anywhere. Coffee, then bed. Coffee will keep us up. Who said anything about sleeping? His voice was husky and rich. She laughed with blushing understanding. This was her heaven, and that nightmare was fading away. Matt was confused. How was he back in the lab? And it was whole and clean. Jill, Jill was there and she turned to the sound of the door opening. Those eyes, so bright and perfect again. And that smile. He had not seen that smile in two long years. She raced right past him as if she didn't even see him. And latched onto him. How was he here, and alive? He listened in horror. He screamed, and they did not see him. He tried to pull at her arm, but his hand went through it. He tried to grab anything and just throw it, but nothing. He fell to his knees, weeping in rage as they left. Her sweet, embarrassed laugh still clawing furrows in his heart. They had not even seen him. And he had seen them. Heard them. But they... <laughs> he turned to see a man in a white suit leaning against the lab table. <laughs> Sucks, don't it? Yeah, your hell is to always see her heaven. But never again be seen. I didn't mean for it to happen. But it did. The man polished his fingernails against his suits. Anyway, better get to cleaning, janitor. And then the man was gone. A mop and bucket where he had been. Well, what did you think of that? Crazy story, eh? I love those that just seem to turn on the flip of a coin. Everything could have been just so different if just this one little event hadn't happened. And nice to see a bit of divine intervention in there as well. I think he got exactly what he deserved. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below, and as ever, I will do my best to reply to as many as I can. Well, that's it for me for this evening, but, well, you know, I'll be back again with you soon enough. I do so dearly hope you're going to join me again real soon. For now, bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>